Oh, hi. So we're talking about equilibrium, and I brought in a little apparatus and a little sample problem to go ahead and show you. I wrote a reaction up on the board, and it's for the decomposition, because HBr is going to break up into a couple of pieces. Two HBr go to hydrogen and bromine gas. And I went ahead and put forward and reverse arrows. So envision a bulb of gas, and we have all three present. Perhaps it's at equilibrium. Now let's say that it reaches equilibrium and the student disrupts equilibrium. They make a change. And the student could make a change by one of two things. They could go ahead and change the concentrations of a gas or more than one gas, or they can change the temperature. Now if we go ahead and change the concentrations, let's start with HBr over on the left, our sole reactant. If we increase the concentration of HBr, we would expect the concentrations of products, H2 and Br2, to go up. And I'm going to denote that by showing a series of arrows. If we increase HBr, equilibrium shifts. I can demonstrate this with these little separatory funnels filled up with colored water. There's a connector tube down at the bottom. And as you might see quickly, as I raise up one of these separatory funnels, the uh, level of solution here, which is just water with blue food coloring, drops. Gravity is at work. So these are going to reach the same level. Let me go ahead and show them like this. But if I set them back down, you're going, hey, they're not at equal levels right now. So this one's going to increase, and this one's going to decrease. This is a physical example of equilibrium. They'll come to rest. They will remain at their same levels, although water molecules can transport through this tube underneath. Now chemical equilibrium. HBrs are constantly going and making H2 and Br2. And at the same rate, if we're at equilibrium, Br2 and H2 react to make HBr. If we increase the amount of HBr, equilibrium is going to shift to the right. And the concentration of H2, concentration of Br2, will increase. A little simple analogy would be making cookies. If you add more ingredient, you're going to make more cookies. Now if we choose something on the right side to increase, this is going to get interesting. Let me put a squiggly line right here. If we add something on the right side, for example, H2 gas, we are going to shift equilibrium to the left. If we add more H2, we're going to make some more HBr. But we are not going to make more Br2. As a matter of fact, the concentration of Br2 will go down. The reason for that is if you add more H2, we're going to make some more HBr. And in order to make some more HBr, we need to consume some of our bromine. An example of this might be making cookies. You have an abundant amount of ingredients, except you run out of flour. So you go to the store and get more flour. Now you start using more flour, the ingredients that you have on the countertop, like chocolate chips, baking soda, sugar, these start to drop because you're using them up to make more cookies. So the logic here goes, if you increase one of these, the other reactant goes down to make the stuff on the left side. And the same can be said here. If you increase the concentration of Br2, you're going to consume H2 to make more HBr. So changing concentrations. While we have this up, let's talk about heating or cooling this reaction. I made a note in the top right here that delta H for this reaction is positive. I'm not concerned with the magnitude. The 72 doesn't bother me. Positive number is endothermic. Energy is needed for this reaction to go. And when I say go, it's written from left to right. Because it's in equilibrium, we're also having the right to the left reaction. But our convention is this delta H value, the enthalpy of reaction, goes for making stuff on the right, which we call product. Endothermic, heat's required. So if we add heat to this, add heat. In other words, put a Bunsen burner underneath it, heat up the hot plate. You are going to give the reaction exactly what it wants, endothermic and you're going to shift to the right. So the concentration of HBr is going to go down. Concentrations of product, H2 and Br, is going to go up. That's exactly right. Now, if you were to cool this down, if you were to put this over ice or carbon dioxide, you would be subtracting heat. 
Now this reaction wants heat to go to the right side and you're taking heat out. Uh, you're going to shift equilibrium to the left. You're doing the opposite of what this wants to go to the right. Now if this reaction were written for another system and you had exothermic negative value here, just the opposite would be true. For an exothermic reaction, heat's given off. You don't want to put heat in. It wants to give heat off. So you're not going to be able to go to the right. It's going to be the opposite of this. If you want an exothermic reaction to go to the right, you actually cool it or take heat away. So it's the converse. So a little exercise involving adding or subtracting a reagent and also talking about adding heat or subtracting heat from end or exothermic reactions.